and God of peace. If there's any malice, any grudge is always out against you. It is like a curse that is being sent against you. And until you reconcile and say to that case, that curse will follow you everywhere, blocking your prayers from being answered, blocking the acceptance of your gifts. This is exactly what God is telling us here. That first, he said, leave there that gift for the Lord. Don't give it yet. Put it by the side. Go your way, bring it also to that brother that you think or that you know has fought against you. And after you reconcile with him, after he's happy with you, after his mind is fair towards you, then come and offer that gift. It's only then that God will accept that gift. Isn't this a tall order? Because this is God's ways and we have to obey it. And many of us don't do this. We say, after all, I don't know what's going against me. I don't care. That's the problem. No, 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 no. If in that case, and you are bringing your gift, you are wasting your money because that gift will not be accepted. And most of us are guilty of this. Job 42 verse 8, 1 Timothy 2 8, 1 Peter 3 7. So it's telling us the right way and the wrong way to bring our thanks offerings before God. Most of us don't follow these principles at so our gifts are not acceptable before God and we don't get anything back. We wonder how come I've been offering so many thanks offerings to God and I don't see any change in my life. Job 42, verse 8. Verse 8. Now therefore, yes. take for yourselves seven bulls and seven rams. Yes. Go to my servant Job. Mm-hmm. And offer up for yourselves a burnt offering. Yes. And my servant Job shall pray for you, mm-hmm. for I will accept him, mm-hmm. lest I deal with you according to your folly, mm-hmm. because you have not spoken of me what is right, as my servant Job has. That's right. let's, let's use that as a good example to illustrate what God is telling us here. Job had been afflicted by Satan. He killed, Satan killed all his children, ten children in one day. He destroyed all his property, all his fortune. So at this sort of an injury, God allowed him to inflict terrible diseases on Job's body. So that even when his friends came to sympathize with him, they could not recognize him. Now to further complicate that, his friends now blamed Job for what happened to him. And that was wrong, seriously wrong. Can you imagine how you would have felt? Not only that my I that not that I lost all my children, my fortune. Now you, my friends, that are even expected to help me, are even blaming me. It was not for him to have come to stand. But he didn't. So because those friends said that thing to Job, Job was agreed against them. His heart was not pure towards them. So God said, for and God would have judged those men for saying those wrong things against you because all they said was wrong. God, Job was not responsible for his problems. They, that was just what they thought. They felt that Job was supposed to be a holy man and because this happened to him, he must have sinned. Just like today, many people, if something happens to a man of God, a woman of God, they will think they sin in their lives. Remember when the apostles Peter and James uh, this found that man who was blind from birth, and they asked Jesus, said, Who sinned, this man or his parents? Why is he born blind? They immediately assumed that the sin had caused that man blindness. And Jesus said, No, this blindness came to show all God's glory in that man's life. So it's not everything that is due to sin, you know, that many of us assume. Anyway, Job, God would have judged those men. But he gave them a chance and said, Go and offer seven rounds to Job. When you do that, his heart will become pure towards you. And when he prays for you, I will now hear his prayers on your behalf and not judge you. This is exactly the example of God's trying to illustrate in this passage. Because having offered those rounds to Job, he has softened his heart towards them. He would now pray for them and God would hear his prayer. If Job's heart was hard to his friends, there is no prayer Job would have prayed that God would have listened to. So 
was obviously that your heart is not pure towards his friends, towards your friends. So most of us will go and get prayers from uh, people that are, their hearts are not pure towards us, and so God doesn't answer those prayers. This is why in the, in the book of uh, yours, the judges, I think, in Numbers, God says to give the priests the dues, to give them gifts. So when you do that, he will pray for you and I will answer his prayers. Many of you don't understand this principle. You just want the pastor to pray for you, pastor to pray for you, but you haven't given him anything, you haven't, uh, it's not like you have to give him, but when you give him something, his heart will become pure and suffer towards you. Imagine uh, you're asking the pastor to pray for you, he's having financial problems, he can't pay his children's school fees, he can't pay his house rents, and you come and you say, Lord, hey, Pastor, pray for me, I have a problem. You'll pray for him by the right, but his heart is somewhere else. But you say, Ah, Pastor, I know things are hard. Please take this uh, oh, 100,000 naira, or take 200,000 naira, you know, just help with the fee, you know, the responsibilities. And after that, come and say, Pastor, pray for me. Look, his prayer is going to go straight to heaven for you. Because now, he's praying with a pure heart towards you. You have relieved his body, his heart is pure, and anything he prays for you, go outside. Many of you understand that. Just that after all, he's a pastor. Why can't he pray for me? Yes, he can pray for you, but is his heart pure towards you? And we helped him in any way. This is what, this is what we're referring to. That before you bring him, for me to accept that gift from you, we must make sure that Nobody has a party against you. Now, if you don't know anybody, that's separate. But God knows that you know. See? God knows that you know that this brother, this sister, has something against you. And God expects you to want to reconcile with them before bringing your gifts. If you bring your gift, your thanks of things before God, and you know that that brother or sister has something against you, and you have reconciled, you have just wasted a lot of money. God will not give you any credit towards it. This is a bitter truth that nobody speaks about. Which they should speak about because in this church we regularly have thanks of your every So if you want to give, let's go to first Timothy 2 8. And first Timothy 2 8. Yeah, there you go. First Timothy 2 8. Yeah. Desire. I, I desire therefore yes. that you may pray everywhere, mm -hmm. lifting up holy hands, yes. without wrath mm -hmm. and doubting. Yes. You see? Lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. When you pray, your heart will be pure. If you have grudges in your heart against the fellow human being, God will not hear your prayers. Your heart will be pure towards the fellow human being, for God to answer prayer. Because God is God of love and peace. You cannot be praying to God to help you when you have a bitter grudge against the fellow human being. Say, how can you love God that you have not seen? When you can't even love the fellow human being that you can see. Okay, first Peter 3 7. First Peter 3 7. Say, Peter 3 7. First Peter 3 7. Yes. Husbands. Likewise, dwell with them with understanding, uh -huh. giving honor to the wife yes. as to the weaker person, and as being heirs together with the grace of life, uh -huh. that your prayers may not be hindered. You see, that your prayers may not be hindered. This is a very powerful verse. Husband and wife must remain in fellowship and love. Otherwise, as commonly seen, many husbands and wives have grudges against each other. That's the normal. And so when they pray, most times their prayers are not answered. Because God sees their hearts that they have evil thoughts against each other. See? He says to pray in agreement. If you say pray in agreement, it means that you and that person are praying for have nothing against each other. And then you can agree. When you agree on anything, you say, don't pray for the Lord, Father, and that's God's word. But when you are praying for somebody, I remember the story of the church where they said, a man had a mental problem. God said to find seven people in that church. And if you can find seven people who has a claim towards each other, he will heal that man. 
But they were not nice to go to church. Who had came to us was each other. There was this one who said, ah, no one, I don't know. I can't say I don't have anything against him. And then they would say, ah, no. So I have, you know, they were not nice to go to the whole church who are clean towards each other to pray. You must realize that I've come to life and I to God. God sees a lost life. I was like, I think we cannot deceive him. Of course, no, nobody else can see what they're thinking. But God knows it. And God is, is the one person you are praying to. He will not honor that prayer as long as that God is in your heart. So, this is important. We have to walk in. on this ourselves. This is why many prayers are not answered. Now, people who walk on spiritual walks, but nothing gets shown for it. Because those evil thoughts, those evil grudges, the malice they are keeping the worst thing against you, they are blocking the answers to your prayers. They say, no, we can't have this. No, we can't have this breakthrough because he did this against me. So, 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 and it is true. Wow. Nothing will ever happen. So, we are going to need to check ourselves. So, one day I went to Chicago. And it was uh, on the day of uh, the washing of the feet of communion. And this brother here said something uh, to upset me. So the shot before the communion said, he told me, he said, I know you have, you have to forgive me for the day I said, why? Well, because you're going to take communion and you have to have a clean heart before you can take communion. And it was correct. I immediately released him. I said, Father, I forgive you. Because I knew it was wrong for me to go and take a communion with him. Bitterness in my heart is a lot of pain. A heart is a very important to God. Alright? So, he said, I agree with the adversary quickly, whilst we are in the way with him. Let's at any time the adversary deliver you to the judge, and the judge deliver you to the officer, and he will cast into prison. Again, we are seeing, seeing God trying to tell us to be at peace with each other. But most of us who want vengeance, I will show you who I am. You don't know who you are dealing with. I will show you. That is devilish, satanic. That was it. Why don't you rather take wrong for the sake of Christ? Let me go regard you as a fool. Yes. Do it for the sake of Christ. Rather than say, no, I'm going to show you. I can you a child of God, be friends, and I'm a child of God. And taking them to God. Of course, we know what's happening in this church, where the elders are taking children to God. How can we claim to be living? Church of Christ, when we are taking each other to cross. The Bible says that don't you know that you disgrace the name of Jesus by doing that? And you declare to be Christian children of God? So why don't you rather take it wrong? Rather be cheated. I said, that's well, okay. You can take it, that's fine. Alright. Means nothing to me anyway. All these titles, all these ranks, they're not going to take you anywhere. The day you die, you nobody's know going to say they were oh, then I was so 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 and so coming. <laughs> that's, that's rubbish. That variable is only on this app. Means nothing. The kingdom of heaven. Which variable are you? Variable to, uh, to human beings. Are you variable before Jesus? Hmm? That's what you have to ask yourself. All these things which you are killing yourself for, paying thousands of naira for. Where does it get you? If you are not a venerable before Jesus, go and put it off. It's a waste of time and money. Rather put on brother. Because many of you are venerable of the earth, you are brother before the kingdom of God. It is true. You see? So God wants us to be at peace. You know, if somebody says, I want to take you to court, the Bible says, yeah. Tell them, you know, tell them, don't fight, don't try and defend yourself. They want your court given to them. Stand on the left, give them the right cheek. That is not what God wants. Then you see how God will fight for you. That says that when your enemy is hungry, give him food. When he starts giving him drink. But by so doing, you are giving coals of fire upon their heads. Psalm 32 verse 6. Isaiah 55 verse 6. So God does not want you to be fighting for your right and say no. They are these things cheating me. Let them cheat you. And you see how God will promote. See what happened to uh, Jacob when he went to Levi's house and Levi cheated him. <laughs> I want to read that passage in the book of Genesis. Isaiah 55. 
Verse 6. Verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Yes. Call upon him while he is near. Yes. Let the wicked forsake his way, uh -huh. and the unrighteous man his thoughts. See. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. Six. And so I go, for he will abundantly pardon. Give it to the Lord. Let God fight the battle for you. Don't fight for yourself. Brethren, we cannot wait for God's time. Sometimes 2 verse 6. We want vengeance right away. No. When God avenges for you, even you'll be pitying your enemies. Psalm 32 verse 6. Verse 6. But this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you. Yes. In a time when you may be found. Huh? Surely in the flood of great waters, right. they shall not come near you. Ah, uh, in the flood of great waters, when the tribulation comes, they won't come near you. Why? Because we've already prayed to God before that. So the very next thing to you, you shall by no means come out. Thanks, so you have paid the uttermost pardon. That means if you go to court, with somebody, or you're struggling, dragging something with somebody, you may end up losing everything. Don't be so sure, oh, I'm going to be vindicated. No, <laughs> you'll be surprised when the case comes against you. Have you ever seen that happen so many times? People who are so sad that they don't win the case, and at the end of the case, they lose the case. So rather than go to that extreme of taking someone to the law, or Fighting for it, just say, okay, is, is it land? Check it. This land I'm not going to take it to hell. The day I die, somebody else will own it, right? Is it property? Check it. Go give me something more. But no, you want to fight for it. Is it my right? How can I do this? No, I'll show him. I'm going to start doing all these terrible my charms against each other. Children of parents. Killing each other for our property. Totally meaningless. All those property you will leave here. Nobody's going to get into heaven. You know? So God is telling us, be at peace. Everything you're going to do there. Be, let them slap you. Let them cheat you. Fine. When God begins to fight for you, you begin to look at what happened to Moses. Moses was accused by uh, his Miriam, his sister, his senior sister. For marrying a black woman. Okay, Moses had already married in the, a Jewish woman, and then that woman, you know, and she married another one. And uh, he ran out accused and said, How did you not marry a black woman? And started confronting him. <laughs> God just kept quiet. Moses could not defend himself. Oh, no, 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 no. The next thing Moses knew, yeah, he had become leprous. It was Moses that began to beg God <laughs> to heal her. Is that the Bible? He didn't defend me, he didn't say anything. I said, eh? So you're not even afraid to talk against my, my anointed person. You, you, you are not even afraid. I will show you. Moses did not defend himself at all. It was God that defended him. You two should be in the place of Moses. And they accuse you, they abuse you, they insult, they cheat. Just be quiet. See how God is going to fight for you. You be the one begging God for that time to release them when it starts with them. That was a terrible thing to fall down to the living God. Case of Hezekiah, the army is the Syrian and the king. They wrote a letter to him. They were going to kill him. They were going to make, the, they were going to make all the Jews eat their pieces and destroy, swallow their urine. And all these terrible things. You know what he did? He didn't defend himself. He just took the letter they wrote to him, went to the temple, laid it before God, said, God, this is your problem. We are your people. Anybody that insults us, insults you. Handle the case. And he went to sleep. You know what happened overnight? God sent an angel that killed 86,000 men in one night who were killed by that angel. 86,000, not hundreds, thousand are killed by God's angel. And the name of the man around me. Who won't run? But suppose everyone fights, oh, we're going to say that again, no, 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 not going to happen. The man who said, what, just get quiet. So, okay, to God, and God tells you this. That's 
That's what you and I should do. Don't pipe yourself. Let God fight for you. In the enemies of God. Say, lay a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That should be your prayer. Don't say, God, kill them, destroy them. No, no, no. Just say, Lord, lay a table before me. Let them see your hand on my life. Don't kill them. Let them need to see your power in my life, your blessing on my life. So you have planned it for sin by them of all time, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her, I commit adultery with her already in his heart. Well, you have planned for both men and women. So women also lust after men, just as men lust after women. So Jesus is saying that many of you are saying, Oh, I'm not committing adultery with any woman. But how about your hearts? Have you committed love to your heart again by a young girl in your office? Or oh, that woman who is married to somebody else? Have you committed love in your heart? Even though you haven't done it physically, but your hand imagined going to sleep with her or him. So you can say to anybody that you have committed adultery, but in your heart you committed it. And you are just as guilty as if you had done it. So there's no one fooling yourself. And say that, oh, I didn't come to that water. You are you're already guilty, you're already charged. I'm standing against you, waiting for you to die and face the wrath of God when you die. So that was it's a hot life. That's why I said then that the unrighteous man for six thoughts is a hot that defile us. That's why Jesus said it's not what you eat that defiles it's what comes out of your mouth, because the Bible comes from your heart. See? Saving, cheating, murder, all these terrible things come from your heart. Those are the things that define a man, not what a man eats, because whatever you eat goes out of your body. It's not, it doesn't defile you. So it's very important. Now, you can say, oh, I don't uh, lust after women or men, but how about magazines to read? Those pornographic magazines. How about your telephone? Now, porn is everywhere. Even on the telephone, never used to be like that. Now, there's printed one and out for an image. I remember we were in a prayer meeting and we were trying to do a Zoom meeting and somebody came in, we don't know how this person came into the room. I saw him began to see programming pictures. It was so disgusting. So they could be had to shut it down and the mutual body could come in uh, without uh, being screened. So pornography is everywhere. So you can say, oh, I don't know certain men, but what do you watch with your eyes? What do you read? Do you read those men's magazines so that we are you secretly order for it and you are watching it? Hmm? You are just as guilty as somebody who's just not a man. Because that man or woman you are watching or reading about, you are already committing and watching your against them. They're not, they're not your wives, they're not your partners. Anybody who's not your partner, can you lost with them, you will the adultery. So let's not stop fooling ourselves. If you're currently engaged in pornography or reading pornographic materials, you ask God to forgive you and give you the power to stop it. Because those eyes that are using to watch those things, some of you, you lost after women. Begin to the breasts of women, their bottom. That eyes that are walking past. <laughs> Those eyes that are taking you there to hell fire. That's what Jesus said. If your right eye offends you, that means your right eye is sinning. You are constantly sinning with your eye. It says, pluck it out and cast it from thee. Wow. You say, ah, that's extreme. Yes, extreme. Why? Therefore, it is better for you than one of your members that your right eye. That should perish rather than your whole body be cast into hell. Hell is real. Jesus is coming back. You better smart enough. If you came to light and in that sin, you will not go with him. Jesus went to hell. He knows about hell and he's talked about here. Some of you don't believe in hell. You've been deceived with that all God is too good to send them to hell. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. He didn't create hell for human beings, there were fallen angels, but men choose to go there because they really like him because of authority. So if anybody in the world is making you sin, 
it will be your eyes, it will be your mouth, it will be your hands. Some men, their hands always touch other women when they are passing by. They do things with their hands, they don't do. That hand has been possessed by Satan and the best way is to cut off the eye. How can you cut off your own hand? Yes, because if you don't, that hand will lead you to hell. It's better to be one handed than go to hell than to have two hands and go to hell. There are many people today who are in hell because of the past of their bodies. Your private organs have led you to hell. Why? Because you used it to do what you must not do. Hmm? These are pitiful words. Cut it off. Colossians 3 verse 5. Have I ever seen somebody do that? Uh, I don't know, but is it God said to do it? If God said to do it, you better do it. Some of you, you have you have the pastors who are blind, and I think the gospel more than many pastors who have both eyes. Colossians, Colossians, three, verse five. Five. Yeah. Therefore, who should that? Your members. Go to death your members. Which are kill those members. Which are on the heart. That means your part of your body. Okay? Well, Orientation. Uh-huh. Uncleanliness. Uncleanliness. Passion. Mm -hmm. Evil desire. Evil desire. Confessiousness. Confessiousness. Which is idolatry. Is idolatry. Because of the because of these things, mm -hmm. the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of the of disobedience. That's it. Because of this thing, the wrath of God is coming upon. So if anybody wants me, you see, some of you cannot control your urges. You see a woman, you have to go, and go to bed with them. You see a man, the same thing. That hiding from them, you better do something about it. That's why in the past they used to castrate men. Men who could not control their urges, they would cut off their testes. So that would kill the urge because that's for one of them. You know, the same for women. So it's better for you to live like a woman and go to heaven than to continue to follow your urges and end up in hellfire. Because hellfire, there's no end. It's a sentence without end. You know, this can give sentence five years, ten years, even twenty years. But hell is eternal for eternity. See, when Jesus says it, he knows what he means. He's been there. Hell is real. You better buy your time now. Say, Lord, help me. This is my sin. And uh, people still me. People think I can't control myself. You need deliverance from that spirit. That's making you steal people's things. In the office, you take that pen, you take anything you see, you've taken it. You are possessed by spirit of sin. You need deliverance. The baby is gossiping. Before you say to all, oh, start gossiping about this person. You are possessed with an unclean spirit. And you need deliverance from it. Otherwise, that your mouth will lead you to hell fire. Hmm? Maybe it's envy. Everybody around you are envy them. Oh, why, why can I have a dress like that person? Why can I have him in his house? Why can I have his wife? Covetousness. She will lead you to hell. Heaven is a holy place, and only few people find it. Most of you, of course, you are doing what you like with your bodies. You don't care, after all, my body is not your body. You are just a tenant in that body. Because on the day you die, your body will stand like this, your spirit will be like this, and your body will be different. Tell God exactly what you did. Many of you have done abortions. Some of you tell me, somebody told me, she said she has done 13 abortions. I said, What? She said, Yes. She said, Even that's what she can remember. She probably done more than that. And that person is the pastor today. Your body will accuse you before God. You better repent now. So if your right hand repents, you cut it off, cast it from you. It was probably for you that one of the members your your that your right hand is constantly touching women's bottoms and doing all the terrible things that that hand should perish. In fact, it's judgment of that hand. You should be happy. This hand you can control. These eyes that are constantly making you steal, this, you have to be judged. You will die, I can be die and go to hell. That's the way you should look at it. This hand, this eye, the way you're going, 
being a doer of hell. Imagine having somebody in your life who is leading you to hell. What are you going to do? Right? Don't carry all them, right? You don't want to continue with them. If you know they will lead you to hell, that illicit relationship you have with that woman in the office, your side chick, maybe it's another time for you. You're hiding from your wife, and maybe you have children by like her. And you think that you know, you, nobody knows. No, God knows. Oh, yeah. You're going to pay for it. You better wisen up and repent now. Huh? And not that your whole body should be cast into hell. There's still time for repentance. Sometimes you have life in you, you can still repent. But the minute you die, everything is fixed. It's only judgment. So you can cry your eyes out. No mercy. So we only have mercy when you still have the prayer. Like, I can repent to that and say, God, that me. I know people have been this wrong. I've been trying to stop it. I can't stop it. God, help me. Give me the power to stop this. I don't want to go to hell. Because of this habit, some of you masturbate. Some of you use drugs. All kinds of illicit drugs. You inject into your body. You inhale. You are defying the temple of God and you call yourself Christian. That they said, whosoever shall put away his wife or divorce his wife, let him give her a bill of divorce. That same to you that whosoever shall put away his wife, that means divorce his wife, except for fornication, causes his hand to commit adultery. This means, causes his hand to commit adultery. Whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce, commits adultery. <laughs> if the whole church was to observe this, I would say maybe 80% of the church were committed adultery. Because the divorce rate in the church is about 60%, even higher than in the world. So if you divorce your wife for any reason, oh, I can't agree with her, she's not a nice woman, she does this, she does that, okay, or send for the wife, then that woman will leave you. As long as she goes out and marries another person, she has committed adultery, you that you married her, you committed adultery, and you that you divorced her, you committed adultery. So that was the plan of God, is that man and woman should stay together for life till death do us a pass. God has no provision in his kingdom for divorce. That's the very word Sydney is saying. That except for unfaithfulness of fornication, that's the only biblical ground for divorce. Any other reason doesn't work. Because if you divorce your wife or your husband for any other reason apart from fornication, you immediately are against of adultery because that man that married somebody else. He is guilty of adultery. The person that married that man is guilty of adultery because you are married somebody else's husband. As far as God is concerned, once you marry somebody, it's for life. If you separate and marry somebody else, you commit adultery. Except for condition. See? Very important. And what do you find in church today? Of course. <laughs> the divorce is so high. I don't like it. You don't like it. That's it. I'm gone. Next, I meet another person and marry them. Next, I leave that one without marrying somebody else. Some people have married three, four times. Especially women. Have one child for this man, two for this one, three for that one. Five children, all different fathers. <laughs> you are number one in the list of adultery. And those demons are waiting for you in your life. Nobody preaches these things. Luke 16, 18, Romans 7, 3. Luke 16, 18. So God does not like divorce. It's, not, it's in the book of Malachi, actually. But Luke 16, 18. And um, Romans 7, 3. Let's read those first. God said, I hate divorce. He said it to himself. Oh, Malachi. Don't kill yourself. God understands. No, 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 no. In God's vocabulary, there's no room for divorce. Okay, go on. Yes. So then, if wife and husband be, mm -hmm. she marries another man. Uh huh. She will be called an adulteress. That's it. You see? But if her husband die, mm -hmm. she is free from mm -hmm. that law. Yes. So that she is no adulteress, mm -hmm. though she has married another man. You see? That is the only reason a woman will have before God to marry another man is when the husband dies, except fornication. So any other reason I can get on with her, I don't like her, he's getting old, he's ugly, he's fat, he's this, he's that, he's not that nice, 
is not acceptable for God. And many, many of your divorce or even best things like that. Oh, it's always fighting me. It doesn't bow down to me. All these things. You don't divorce the father for that. Once you marry before God, in heaven and quiet, you two are for life together. If you choose to leave that partner, you marry somebody else, it's not for issue, you may be right against you, adulterer. The person that married you, adulterer. You, the person that divorced your husband, adulterer. Three people have become adulterer. Before God. And then you are going around preaching, or preaching other people. When you yourself are guilty of it, it doesn't matter how. Malachi 2 verse 16. Say for the Lord, the God of Israel, said that he hated putting away. He hated divorce. For one covered violence with his garment said the God of God. Therefore, take it to your spirit that you do not drink your sleep. God says, I hate divorce. I hate divorce. So once you marry somebody, just take it for life. Even that provision for adultery, for fornication, is just, you can still forgive if you want. You can forgive your wife, even if you want to trust you, or your husband. You may not trust them again until <laughs> you die, but you can forgive them. And people have done this to save their marriages. So, these are the things. Again, the kind of said that by them of all time, we shall not swear. Uh, but shall perform your oaths, but seems to use no swear at all, neither by heaven, but God's throne, neither by the ark, but put so, neither by Jerusalem, but the city of the great king, unless I you swear by your head, because you can't make one hear about the black. But unless your commission be yes or no, anything more than that comes from the devil. So many of you have fallen to swear. Ah, I swear by my mother's grave. Oh, I swear by my mother's grave. I swear by this or that. This is a sin. You can't swear by anything else. Don't swear at all. Don't say, that's it. Sorry, if you don't believe me, that's it. I can't do anything. It's a sin for me to swear by anything like that. And some of you even use the Bible to swear. Even if you know you're lying, you, you use the Bible and you say, oh, I put my head on. You're just cursing yourself. God says, anything more than that is of you. Therefore. So these are the famous things. Last verse says, and I have an idea for you, but it to you. You shall resist not evil. Most of us have smite you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. The enemy will say, Sue you as love and take away your own death in hand with proof also. Most of us have compelled you to go and man, go with him too. See? Those are the things that I was thinking about. Don't fight for your rights. Let them cheat you. Let them take your property. Let them take your land. Just go to God. Say, God, you see how they cheated me? You know that this land belongs to me. You know this property belongs to me. But they are taking it from me. Lord, I lay this case in your hands. Come and do what you have done. That's what you have to say. Don't even say a man from me. Just say, just don't do what you have done. And go and forget about it. And wait. <laughs> Give five years and see what will happen. That land they took from you, or that property they took from you. They will come to beg you. Please take it back. <laughs> when the pastor has gone in there, Say, please take it back, take it. We don't want it anymore. Don't, don't cry for yourself. All the God of peace, He will avenge for you. So we learned a lot tonight, and all these things are very important because many of us, most of us, are guilty of these things we talked about tonight. We need to repent and begin to do the right thing. As soon because on the day of judgment, they will say, on so 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 dates, my son. Talk to you about this and you listen to him. So you can't say you don't know because he talked to you about it. You heard him and you still continue in that sin. There will be no defense. Now, if you are not born again, if you have not surrendered your life to Christ, this is an ideal opportunity because Jesus is coming back soon, very soon. No surprise for all. You don't want to be caught in your sin. If you are caught in your sin, you will not go with him, and the only way you can get to heaven is not to get caught up. That's why Christ comes. So say this simple prayer to me. God Jesus, I've sinned against God and man. I'm sorry for my sins. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me my sins. Wash my sins away with the precious blood. Then come inside my heart. Rule and reign over my life. 
main bit you are calling, you are taking my name in the book of the dead and put my name in the book of life. Those that will be with you in heaven. And I want to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You can say that prayer now or before you go to bed tonight. And Jesus Himself will come inside your hearts, will change you to become more like Him in every way. So you go to heaven to possess your mansions, there in my father's house. There are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. For where I am, you shall be there also. Imagine living next door to Jesus. <laughs> what simplicity. He's open. You can do it. Let us pray. You go on. Jesus Christ, come in my camp. Can I do a word of that from the last night? Yeah. By a word of that you shall know the truth, and the truth has set you free. Amen. Let the truth share with us and set us free. Amen. From the deception of sin, from the deception of Satan, Amen. from the deception of worldly pleasures. Amen. Because we know the time is short, we will soon return. Let us not be caught on our ears. Let our lamps be burning. Let your fire be born in our lives. Deliver us from unrighteousness, unrighteous thoughts, fornication, and all these terrible sins. That our best may be holy and pure unto you. Amen. For that holiness, no matter sees law. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. That's it for tonight. Make sure you eat the word of God like food and consume it as for illumination. Pray without season. You can never pray too much. And go to church regularly. And God will hold you and keep you till the day of his appearance. In Jesus' name, Amen.